Welcome to Breakthrough Success. I am your host, Mark Roberti, founder of the Content Marketing Plaza, bringing you three new episodes each week where I and top-level guests teach you how to take your business to the next level and achieve your breakthrough. And before we jump into today's episode, let me ask you a quick question. How much would your life change if you can make six figures from your content? Imagine being able to quit your 9-to-5 job, do what you love for a living, and spend more time with your family. That's what we help our students do at the Content Marketing Plaza, an 8-week program that will help you build your way to six figures via your content. You can learn more about the Plaza by heading over to contentmarketingplaza.com, which will be in the show notes. All right, let's jump right back into the episode. Becoming a successful entrepreneur is not just about putting in a lot of hours on your business. It's not even just about working smarter on your business. There's a lot more to it. And one of the uh, added things that you have to do, one of these uh, things that we all know is important but may not necessarily uh, make it into a lot of people's busy lives is Uh, This whole idea of getting stronger physically through exercise, really training your mind on the mental side, and also keeping your emotions in check. So if you want to be successful as an entrepreneur, keep hustling, keep working smarter, but also prioritize uh, your physical shape, prioritize your mentality, and prioritize your emotions as well. So those are the three key areas that we are going to jump into in this episode. Today's guest who will be joining us today, he is the strength architect who helps people get stronger, motivated, and feel empowered. As the founder and driving force behind three fitness businesses in Cancun, Mexico, he's worked closely with over 2,200 students in less than two years. His book, Educate, Demonstrate, Motivate, helps women get stronger physically, mentally, and emotionally for lifelong results. Today's guest for episode 295 of the Breakthrough Success Podcast is none other than Jay K. Lee. Jay, it is such a pleasure to have you on the show. Mark, man, it, I am pumped to be here. You sound motivated. I'm motivated, man. Let's get into this and let's give let's give your listeners a show, man. Jay, I, I really love that ad too. That's a really great enthusiasm to have at the start of a show. And we do have so much to talk about. So definitely a lot of room for excitement. But before we do that, though, uh, can you give us some background as to why you wrote your book and a little bit about your backstory as well? Oh, yeah, absolutely. But the, i tell you the truth. The main reason that I wrote my book is that I wanted it to be the last book that anybody would ever need when it came to like fitness, nutrition and try to trying and getting and staying motivated. Right. You always see this. I mean, if you look on Amazon, there's probably what over one hundred and fifty thousand different books. If you combine like fitness, exercise, dieting, nutrition books, there, there's hundreds and thousands of books. But they're all usually just one little piece of information and they expound on it right so they take one small thing and they make this 100 page book about it but it only tells you one thing they don't solve all the things that come to actually creating a lifestyle and i wanted to do that and i wanted to do that in under 100 pages and the great thing about that book also is i include a whole year of training included in there so i mean there's absolutely no excuse not to get started and to be the best version of yourself and I mean, so that is something really interesting you bring up about the books because there are some books that they do have this uh, winning point that they do seem to emphasize over and over again. I heard somewhere uh, if you take a 200-page book, you can condense it into 20 pages and still get the main lessons. That's something I heard somewhere. Wow. Uh, wow. But it's definitely something uh, I-, I feel like you could definitely test that out and uh, – see it happen now obviously that's not the topic of our interview but uh, <laughs> well, i mean the 80 20 rule right i mean yeah, it kind of falls into rule, that exactly <laughs> yeah i mean uh, so man, i mean I, that's I disappointing to hear but yeah i guess it makes sense <laughs> i mean I, not I my book so you don't better you better not be skipping any parts of my book you'll miss something <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then there's that whole training plan that you have for us so definitely don't skip it no um, absolutely not Um, But one of the, I mean, it's really interesting thinking about the physical, mental, and emotional side. And I don't think it's just something that entrepreneurs don't think enough about. I also think it's something that people don't think enough about. Even if they have the exercise down, those other two 
uh, can be a little harder to pull off. And before, but, okay. absolutely. And uh, before we get really deep into all three of them, I'm wondering if you could clarify a little bit on the difference between the uh, mental side and the emotional and the emotion side. Some people may see those as very similar, so I'd like to get a little divide on that. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think there it, there comes into, you know, two different states almost. I mean, you have a mental aspect of the motivation side also and, and how you mentally treat yourself. Then there's the emotional aspect where, you know, sometimes you just don't feel like doing things. Sometimes you're just not in a good state to even perform or want to do anything. And maybe it's time to rest and stuff. So I think there's a very big difference between an emotional state and being motivated in an emotional way and then trying to be motivated in, let's say, even a mental way and then getting yourself motivated mentally I think those are two huge differences uh, thank you for uh, giving us that uh, clarity on those two differences I just wanted to address that going into the episode for anyone who uh, maybe thought those two were very similar uh, so now we'll like uh, really get really deep into these uh, important topics and I feel like in some cases people get the idea okay I need to be physically stronger I need to have this mental approach that uh, really helps with my improvement and I need to have the emotional part locked up as well. So uh, how exactly do we get consistent at implementing the right behaviors and doing the right actions? Ooh, that's a that's a hard one. I like this one. Okay, I think, uh, you know, consistency just builds with over time. And I think we have to figure out what actually what actually motivates you. And and, and you notice that a lot of people are, are motivated in a lot of different ways. So there's a lot of things that you can do to also set yourself up for success. Um, you can do things like planning, having a plan of doing things. Okay, what am I going to do? What am I going to wake up and do on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday? What am I going to eat Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? It might not sound like the most funnest thing, but it's a way to can start start to start building consistency in yourself. The other thing you can do is get a buddy. You know, find somebody, reach out to somebody. It's almost 2019. There's going to be a ton of people who are like, I just need to get in shape. I just need to get in shape. And there's going to be a lot of coaches pitching you a lot of stuff to make you buy things. The thing is, is you can just get somebody, a, an accountability partner, and usually that's what most people need. They just need a, a friend. They need someone who can they can call on and they can call on them, not someone who's going to flake out on them all the time. And now most of the time, though, that get you get that group by working with the coach, which I'd say would be the third option to increase your consistency in building good habits, you know, having a good coach there who's actually helping you, growing you, building you, not a coach or not a trainer that's, you know, not telling you everything because they're trying to keep you dependent on them because they need a paycheck. You don't need that in your life. You need someone who's actually going to teach you, help you and, and let you grow. Uh, really awesome stuff. I like the uh, accountability because I mean, you could figure out how to do some things on your own, but it's just a matter of time before uh, you hit a cap and you really need someone else to help you. I mean, I've seen it uh, with me, like I, with this podcast, I had a coach at some point and uh, nice. he really helped out a lot. And you see some of the most successful people who are making seven, eight figures, they're spending a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars a year just on coaches. So uh, that like the accountability is really good to get you to take action and getting a mm -hmm. coach can really help you uh, get to the next level. So, I mean, a lot of great insights in that answer and um i, I mean um like we have the consistency down i think the physical i mean it just comes down to just putting in the work each day uh exercising i think a big weakness though is that um, trump and nerds are so busy i mean you mentioned i mean i mean i know that you had three fitness businesses so how do you find the time in your day to exercise and make that a part of your ritual well, you know, I, I don't think this, I mean, no doubt entrepreneurs fall, fall into this category huge, but who doesn't, who's not True. busy, <laughs> you know, busy. I mean, I mean, and the, and the people who I work with the most are usually single moms. I mean, t if you can tell me someone who's busier than a single mom or how about a single mom who's an entrepreneur or how about a wow, single mom yeah. who's a corporate, who's flying every, you know, every six weeks to another country or to another state, you know, how do you keep up with that? And that's where the beauty comes in with fitness and exercise and knowing what to do. You know, what I tell people all the time is I can get more done with me and my students in 10 to 20 minutes than what most people who spend an hour and a half in a gym. And I don't even need to go to the gym. You know, that's the amazing thing about it. I don't even need, need you to go to the gym anymore. You don't even need to get on my schedule. And that's what I love about online coaching as well. Right. You can have a face to face coach, 
But sometimes that's not what we need, especially as an entrepreneur. You don't have time to get on someone else's schedule. So what's great is having that coach in your pocket, having that plan already set for you. So I was talking about making those plans before. If you have a good coach, you're going to set the plan out for you. Here, this is what we're going to do on these days for your exercise. This is what we're going to do on these days for your food. And guess what? It's going to take less time off of you. It's going to take less stress off of you. It's taking more decisions off of you. So you can focus on your superpower. So you can focus on you and whatever your main goal is, not when it's not fitness. Let someone else figure that out for you. You focus on you. And that is really interesting. I mean, definitely, like, it doesn't matter. You could be an entrepreneur. You, uh, I mean, we're all busy, but we all got to find the time to uh, do it. And it's interesting you mentioned that you could just do some the right exercises for 20 minutes instead of going to the gym. Uh, because some like if you're in the gym by yourself, maybe you don't have the same kind of direction. You don't know the best moves to do to target the right areas of your body. So uh, it's definitely something where if you have that more directed, uh, targeted approach for 20 minutes, that can uh, reap more benefits than spending an hour and a half in the gym. So it's definitely exercise isn't something that uh, you could definitely go really deep into it, but it can be something that can be accomplished in 10 to 20 minutes also. You know, honestly, Mark, I'm a big believer in the minimum effective dose, right? Like if you have a headache, you have an issue, you know, you get grab the aspirin bottle. You see it says, hey, take two aspirin. You could take 50, hmm. right? If you take 50, it's going to get rid of that headache faster, right? Right. Or it could kill you. Yeah. And I, I believe the same thing with fitness. And you see it all the time with ultra marathon runners. You see it all the time with a lot of guys who do even a lot of competitive sports, right? I mean, look how many injuries and look how many people will actually die from cardiovascular disease and issues with their heart mm -hmm. because they run too much. I mean, this does happen, right? I mean, it's just so you have to know what's the minimum effective dose for what you're trying to achieve. What's your goal? And most of the time, most of us, we just want to look good. We just want to look good naked. We want to have more energy. And we just want to be able to go dominate our day, kicking down doors, not laying in a puddle of sweat, trying to make those <laughs> calls. You know what I'm saying? That's not our goal, right? Nice. So you got to figure out what that is. You got to figure out and have someone to, to make that effective, you know, get that effective and that efficiency into your training, just like anything else. And you mentioned that bucket of sweat. I can see that definitely being something that turns people off. They think about the short term pain. Uh, mm -hmm. for that long-term gain uh, but I mean it is like people do think about that when they're getting out of bed to start the day do I really want to exercise to start my day I could sleep an extra 30 minutes and mm -hmm. at that point I think it really like exercise and uh, big goals in general they require you to be mentally strong so I'm wondering what's your advice on how we can build up our mental base so that uh, we are stronger and we are able to confront some of the big challenges of the day. Well, I would say the first thing is it's not really the Marines, right? It's, it's not true that pain is weakness leaving the body, right? That So we can scratch that line off the list of, oh, well, it's got to be painful in order to see results. I mean, the crazy thing that I tell people is I do some of the most basic, easiest, simplest stuff. And one of those things being my the majority of my cardio includes walking, just walking. Oh, wow. Just getting out and walking my dog for 30 minutes. I mean, so when we really think about fitness and what it is and how to how to get us where we want to go or even get motivated to do it, we have to figure out what we like and what we enjoy and realize that more than likely it's not as bad as what it's going to be. And just like business, all businesses is delayed gratification. And that's the same thing with fitness to an extent. You go through some part, but you're looking at what are the gains you're getting from it. You know, you know you're going to feel better after you do it. You know that. You know that even if you give 20 minutes, 30 minutes of exercise, you know you're adding days, if not years, to your life as you build up consistency. You're preventing diseases. You know, if you think that cardiovascular disease is, you know, it affects one out of six people in this United States and it's over 90% preventable. If you think of cancer and how cancer is over 95% preventable. I mean, <clears throat> I don't know what motivates you, Mark, but just knowing that I could possibly live longer and avoid having cancer and avoid having, you know, cardiovascular disease, those are huge motivating factors for me. And uh, when you live longer, you can also think about uh, what kind of life you want to lead and uh, living longer allows you to do that, allows you to have more time to create that impact you want to create, be there for the people who matter to you. Uh, so really attaching some more reasons to 
why you want to uh, get the big goal, exercise, why you want to live longer in this case uh, can really help you uh, take more action that will lead you to that uh, success. And we've talked about the physical side, we've talked about the mental side. Now let's get a little into the emotional side and how we can leverage that and build on what we currently have. For sure. I want, I want to say some one thing. I mean, if, especially for entrepreneurs, we're all trying to build a legacy, right? I mean, that's what that's the name of the game. Am I right? Yeah, definitely. That's why. So if we're, trying to, if we're trying to build a legacy, why not try to live as long as we can? If I tell people that my goal is to live to see the 2100s, it blows people's minds. It'll only make me 115 years old. And I think that we can all do that as long as we're taking care of ourselves. But that's not that long. That, that's not that old. 115? People are still living to 113 now, and look what we made it through. Now we have more science, more knowledge, more everything, but we don't even see it that way. I'm looking to live in past 2100s, man. What's your goal? <laughs> Definitely past 2100 for me. Come on, man. Let's do it. I mean, that's uh, that's something uh, very interesting that you point out. I mean, we think about this legacy all the time, but uh, we don't really think about the end of the journey. And um, I, we have to think about that. We, I mean, part of it, it does happen, but we, if we extend it, we just have more time to make an impact. That's, that's my thought. That's my goal. I mean, what, how long, I mean, imagine Bill Gates and all these guys living even longer. I mean, look at how much changes he's making right now. I mean, I don't know how he takes care of himself. I don't know how healthy he is. I can't talk nothing bad about that guy, but I'm just saying, you know. It would be different if we lost Bill Gates when he was 40-something yeah, compared to if we lose him at 70 compared to if we lose him at 120. Yeah. Even Stephen Hawkins. I mean, there's a lot of great examples. Yeah, Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs. Yeah, Steve Jobs. Yeah. Where would Apple be right now if he didn't, you know, get what, pancreatic cancer? Right. Where would he be at? Or what is it, soft school cancer? I don't know. I can't remember which one it was. But, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, uh, definitely, because uh, the long, uh, uh, it really comes down to that impact. The more time we're here, the more uh, impact that uh, we create. And um, and what's more motivating than that, bro? Come on, Mark. <laughs> what's more motivating than that, man? Come on. Where's your entrepreneurs at? They're not taking care of themselves. You know, man, the best investment you can make is in yourself. Definitely. No doubt. And you can't make you can't help nobody if you're a two. Right, so if you're like, oh, coming in, oh, it's just another day. Yeah. Oh, whoop, just me, just clocking in the clock, and let me see until I can die when I'm 72 or whatever. Right? What? That's no way to live. That's no way. How are you gonna bring that into who, whatever you're trying to create? Right? Like, where is that passion? Where is that energy? And if you're always your energy levels are low because you don't take care of yourself because you're eating crap food or you're not working out and taking care of yourself, then how is that coming into whatever you're trying to create? And, Come on now. I, I would like to expand on that idea of taking care of ourselves because, I mean, I know you uh, help women and uh, that mother nature of uh, uh, putting the child first. Uh, that I mean, I, I, can't, I can't say that I can't say that all mothers have that. I'd say that a lot of them do. Uh, but the idea I'm trying to say here is that some people, uh, they don't have that high enough level of self-care because they're sacrificing for other people and not spending any kind of time addressing themselves. So I'm wondering, how do we find more time to actually care for ourselves? Uh, and how do we uh, do that in the case where we are sacrificing for someone else, but still find the time to uh, for ourselves? You know, I mean, you, you bring up a great point there. I mean, especially, with, and I do help a lot of women, and specifically moms. And the crazy thing with certain women right now, and, and you know, Women at a certain age, they not only are they taking care of their kids, who, or maybe even their adult kids at this point, but more than likely, they're also taking care of their parents. So they're in this right. weird in-between phase of, man, yes. they're, they're split between working a full-time job, let's say full-time corporate job, right, or whatever job you want to say, something that's taking them out of the house for 10 hours at least a day. And then we look at, you know, they're t they have to worry about their, their, their parents, their mom or their dad who has some type of issue going on from dementia to who knows, you know, Alzheimer's to who knows what else they could be going through. And then they're taking care of their kids who are going through high school or going, you know, trying to go to college and they're worrying about becoming empty nesters. I mean, there's a lot, a lot that goes into that. Yeah, so where do you go? You know, I mean, how do you stay motivated for that? How do you find what's going to, you know, your emotional state and to, and to dig deep into, and to keep on, 
trying to live your life, you know? What motivates that? How do you find that? What makes you not want to give up at that point? Yeah, that's really powerful. I mean, it's definitely something that, I mean, uh, like, I didn't even think about the, uh, like, there's just, like, so many different responsibilities. That, I mean, you could Bingo. apply this to anyone, but, like. Exactly. Yeah. So, and you want to know how you solve all that? Yeah, right. Definitely. That's the main that's the main question you're asking me. How do you sacrifice everything else that you have going on to take care of you? Right. And you make yourself that priority. How do you do that? The crazy thing is I can't tell you how to do that. I can tell you how I can tell you, you need to set boundaries. You need to set time for yourself every day. You know, even if it's just one hour to either do your exercise, to do your yoga, to do your meditation, to get away, to take a break, whatever you need to do, just schedule it. Like a doctor. Now, on the other side of that, though, you say, well, why am I even going to schedule it? I have all these responsibilities. I have to take care of this. I have to take care of that. And I say, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're expending all this energy to everybody else. And you're not giving yourself your self-care. How can you be the best for them? How can you take care of them? And then I say, have you ever been on an airplane? And some have, some haven't. And I say, well, what happens, what happens in the case of an emergency? The air masks are going to drop. And what, is the, what do they say? They tell you to put the kids' mask on first because they're the most important? No, that is not what they say. They do not say put the mask on anybody else. They say put the mask on yourself first. It's like that old poem that by uh, Marion Williams, I think she said, where we do, not let, we do not help anybody by letting ourselves dull, by hiding our light. We need to shine. We need to show our light, to show what's possible, to show what we can do. And one of those things is taking care of yourself and making yourself a priority, setting up those boundaries where you are the number one. And all those other things start falling into place. I don't know how it is. I can't tell you how or why it happens, Mark. I call it the paradox of time, man. Because once you start figuring out how to set that one hour, that 30 minutes, whatever, to start taking care of you, everything else starts falling into place. People start working around you. People start giving you that respect because you made that boundary. You set up that respect wall for yourself and everything else falls into place. I don't know how it works or why it works, Mark. It just works. That's a really awesome insight. And um, it's definitely great to know how to do it. It's just a matter of committing to it. And even if you feel like an hour is too much of a boundary to set, just get comfortable with like a 30-minute boundary or a 15-minute boundary. Bingo. If you set some kind of a small boundary, it becomes easier for you to make it slightly bigger uh, because I know people do care for a lot of other people. We're good at uh, caring for others. We're, we're good at uh, complimenting others or – uh, mm -hmm. saying nice things about others but we rarely say nice things about ourselves because you don't want to come off as like having a big ego or something like that so a lot of people really hide their feelings about themselves or don't even acknowledge uh, the work that they do so definitely take that time to set boundaries and uh, care for yourself so that you're able to care for others you're, you're saying all this mark you know what you know where that old saying comes to my head is that old saying whenever you're just coming up you're you're a kid Right. And you're coming up and you're 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 starting to fall into love. Right. And you're falling in love with the first time. Remember what your parents told you? I don't know what your parents told you. My parents said you, you can't love someone else until you fully love yourself. Right. You can't love someone else until you fully love yourself. And for some reason, I don't know how we forget that going from middle school to high school or whoever, whenever that's told to you as a kid to coming up into being an adult, because we've lost this self love aspect of ourselves. And because we look at it as a negative, it's only feeding the ego thing. I might everybody's gonna think I'm a Kardashian because I'm taking a selfie or whatever. We have this whole concept of what everybody else thinks of us when we really need to turn around and just start taking care of ourselves. We make ourselves a priority, right? And we start taking care of ourselves. Then we start taking that focus and we start putting that attention to us. We don't have to show it to everybody else. But if we start doing it for us, it starts really shining through and it really helps. And it's not by you taking a selfie and posting on Instagram. Mm. Yeah, that's a uh, really interesting idea. I mean, you really got to get deeper about caring about yourself and also doing it in an authentic way because uh, Instagram, I heard uh, uh, from a friend, Matt Labrie, who 
uh, he was on episode 282. He said uh, something like Instagram is just everyone's highlight reel. It's the mm -hmm. best moments. So um, like I, I recommend that uh, you practice it every day, that uh, self-care, that boundary, and not just like post something on social media. Uh, it's good to share your great moments on social media, but if it's just like um, you have a bunch of these things that um, – every two weeks or something like that like you only take time to care for yourself like two weeks or do something exciting every two weeks and you post that why not do it every single day uh show uh, have some kind of boundary every day so you're able to uh just uh feel that kind of happiness and love for yourself that you're able to express onto others uh every single day yes yes i like that heck yeah heck yeah and I know we've covered a lot of ground in this episode. And, uh, we, I mean, a lot of this is mindset stuff, um, having that uh, winning mindset, really think about things in the right frame of mind. And uh, a mindset is really big for if you want to achieve a big goal in your life. And uh, the mindset, I mean, it really does make or break. But uh, do you believe there's anything else uh, that may hold people back from being able to accomplish their big goals? Oh my gosh, I think there's millions of things that can hold people back from achieving their goals, man. <laughs> I mean, that's a, I don't know, that's a hard one. I mean, I, I, I mean, I think the number one thing I tell people is who you have around you. I truly, I'm a huge big believer in the five people around you. I'm a huge believer in that. You know, and maybe that's just because of my relationships that I've had growing up in my life, you know, and where I've came from and, you know, things like that. And you don't realize some of the people who you think are your closest people can be the, you know, the ones who are sabotaging you the most. You don't realize it. Self-sabotage also is a big one. You know, have also, there's, have you ever heard a term of a uh, success suicide? You know, you start becoming so successful, so successful, you, you know, you start getting physically sick. Oh, I got a sore throat. I can't make these calls or, Oh, I got a, you know, my hip hurts. I can't go out and go, you know, go to this meeting, you know, success suicide. I think it happens in a lot of aspects and a lot of avenues. Self-sabotage, you have people you have around you, not setting big enough goals. You know, some people set really low goals because they never really don't know how to set a goal and they never really achieved a goal. You know, and once again, believing that you can even achieve that goal, you know, like the Bible says, having the faith of a mustard seed, I can move mountains or whatever. Same thing, you know, having the faith in yourself, you know, but that comes all back to self-love, Mark. Mm -hmm. It all comes back to self-love, having that faith in yourself, having that trust in yourself, having that belief in yourself, stepping out, it's huge things. And I really like that theme of going back to self-love. I mean, uh, like I do ask this question a lot and a lot of the responses are like, uh, you just have to, like there is fear that really holds a lot of people back. And uh, that is certainly true, but I really like this different focus on the self-love concept because uh, I feel like we are like the last people who we give our time and attention to. Uh, so definitely something to uh, keep in mind, always practicing that self-love, setting the boundaries as we've talked about before and i think setting a boundary that's a really great habit for all of us to go by uh but mm. jay what are some of the other habits that you believe we should be doing and what habits for you uh do you think uh are essential for your success Ooh, success in like fitness and health or success in business or what are you talking about success wise and where uh, you i, know, know, I just guess throw us as many habits as possible <laughs> i'll throw as many habits out as possible first off i i mean it Blame it on my my time in the military and stuff like that, but for some reason I had this thing I'd wake up early. I mean, it's sometimes like you know I'm usually up by 4:50 in the morning. I love waking up. I love uh, going and walking my dog each morning, and I just walk. And I mean, like I said, it's five o'clock in the morning. Nothing's up. Nothing's going on, and I can just kind of just enjoy the morning. Uh, I drink a ton of water throughout the day. You know, I tell all my students drink at least 100 ounces. Drink at least three ounces of water throughout your day. Try to drink water. I mean, it's one of you know your body's made up of 80 percent water. We don't realize that, right? So drink water, drink water. Um, another good habit. I, I try to eat good, good meals, you know, each day, right? I try to eat not necessarily like super healthy, clean, uh, you know, this, this and that, but just I eat, try to eat veggies at each meal. I try to eat a good amount of proteins at each meal. I really like to have a nice, good balance. And I try to get a good enough sleep, you know, but usually I sleep probably about six hours a night, six and a half, which sounds crazy to a lot of people, but you know, I get about 92 to 95 percent efficiency in my sleep because I pass out and I fall asleep like a rock and it's hard to wake me up. And yeah, I wake up fresh and ready to go and rock and roll. So I don't know. I, I say good sleep, good food, good exercise, good water, 
That's all you need. Oh, and I meditate. That's another big one. Meditate every day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that there's actually a funny thing. From my perspective about your answer is that um, I, I release these episodes like multiple times each week, so they're separated by a few days. But I do these interviews like back to back. So the last episode with Nina Amir, episode 294, she actually recommended the same thing, drink water. <laughs> and you're recommending that too. And I have an empty Poland spring next to me and I know where I need to go after this interview. Yes. Water uh, is huge, man. You know, it's the only natural detoxifier. You see all these people always like, oh, detox this, ah, detox that. There's nothing that you can detoxify your body more than with water. That's the only natural real detoxifier there is in life. So if you have an issue, have any problems, you feel, you know, drink water, drink water, three liters or at least a hundred ounces a day. Like I said, that's what I recommend to everybody, yeah. everybody. And, and I did bring up that reference, uh, like about my situation, because I just wanted to emphasize the drinking water, because I, I've heard a lot of people talk about it. And some people think that like a uh, soda or uh, there's like a substitute or coffee, <laughs> it, that it's not water, even though it's a liquid that you drink. Bingo. And But I will give a caveat to that. A lot of people think that teas and coffee actually dehydrate you. That is a myth. Don't fall for that myth. You can have and still enjoy your coffee, and it doesn't dehydrate you. So you can enjoy your coffee. It doesn't mean you have to drink more water, right? But it is not the same as water. So just a little caveat, Mark. Yeah, thank you for adding that. I mean, I'm not a tea, coffee person uh, <laughs> because I don't want to uh, rely on those uh, stimulations. Uh, but uh, yeah, definitely uh, good you mentioned that because there are a lot of coffee lovers on the planet. Uh, I got your coffee lovers. Don't worry about it. I'm in the same boat. <laughs> We're paddling together. Taking your espressos each morning. I'm down. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, I know we've gone really deep into uh, just a bit, pretty much a laundry list of good habits to go by. Another thing I like to do is just get as many books in as possible. So I'm wondering if you could share with us three books that you believe will have a positive. Well, that's not as many as possible. I was about to grab my Kindle and just start going rapid fire, Mark. You can Mark. do it. You can do that. No, nah, I ain't going to do that. I won't do that. You want th the top three? Sure. Uh Psycho Cybernetics by Dr. Maxwell Maltz. Amazing book. Amazing book. Um, there's an, another one by Napoleon Hill that everybody thinks of as his number one, but there's a better one that he wrote actually before that, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Let me see if I can find it. How to Sell Your Way Through Life. Hmm. How to Sell Your Way Through Life by Napoleon Hill. Man, I have so many more. <laughs> you Too Can Be Prosperous is an amazing book that will blow your mind. You Too, you too Can Be Prosperous. I can't think of who the name of the author is right now, but that's an amazing one. I mean, even things like The Magic of Believing, uh, Three Magic Words. I mean, there's just so many. Like, I really like a lot of um, really think for yourself. You know, you're, you're, you are your own powerful powerful person inside of you you just have to realize it we don't realize how strong and how powerful we are that's why i tell people all the time you know you're stronger than what you think you know there's ways to build you up and the ways to you know there's things that are happening in your life that are tearing you down but there's ways to build you up and the number one way to you know keep you strong is in your mind and the number and, and if you really want to like philosophy and things like that i love stoicism i love uh meditations by marcus aurelius i think that's a great book to have by your nightstand all night long all day long, whenever you want to read that book, it's an amazing book. I mean, which one? You, you need more? Is that good? <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I don't know. I'm a big book reader, guys. I keep, I keep three books on rotation usually throughout the day. Wow. So it's usually I have one in the morning, one at lunch, and then one before, before I go to bed. I really like them, you know, and I also split them up. So you have like the old school readings in the morning as a wake up thing. If you do that type of stuff, then you can usually, like, I love reading, like, um, autobiographies or biographies by people like I just read one uh Henry Ford's not too long ago the one with um Sam Walton's out of this world even the one the Bezos like the one about Jeff Bezos right the the everything store Elon Musk I mean there's I mean there's a lot of so many autobiographies out there these great great guys why don't we learn from them you know like hearing about how Sam Walton got arrested down in Brazil I mean what a crazy story that is you know what I'm saying like people don't know these stories it, it, and they don't know them unless he wrote wrote about them Right. But we don't even read You know, we don't read the classics because of whatever reason, you know, we'd rather read Ready Player One or whatever. Right. 
no judge zone. Just say it. I don't. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what people read, but I don't. I don't read that. You know, I know I read other things. I, I mean, that, like some of those books, like the Magic of Believing and stuff like that. It's probably a book was probably wrote back in 1930 or 1950 or something. You know, it's probably. I don't even know how I found that book. You know, some friend of a friend of a friend recommended it probably. But I got tons of them. The Power of Habits. I mean, there's just. I mean, there's. I mean, there's so many good ones. Mark, you, that's a that's a killer question, man. You asked the wrong person on that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I've got <laughs> my uh, my sheet of the, that I use to write show notes is just overflowing with books, which we will all of those books will be in the show notes. Uh, Markaberry dot com slash e two hundred ninety five. We've talked about so many books, so we'll just throw in one more content marketing secrets. Uh, for anyone who wants to drive traffic, get revenue, that book will help you with those objectives as you continue to grow your content brand. And before we wrap up this episode, Jay, I've asked you several questions throughout our time together, but what do you believe is one question that we need to be asking ourselves more often? Whoa. What is one question we need to be asking ourselves more often? <laughs> Am I comfortable? I think that'd be the number one question. If you're comfortable, there's some, there's a problem in my opinion, and, it, and that doesn't have to mean you have to be constantly uncomfortable. Like, oh, I'm sitting on the most hardest chair right. or whatever. It's just a matter of you know. Re- I think it's very easy for all of us to fall into a, a complacency. I guess would maybe be a better word, more of complacency, more of comfortability. Of you know, life is good right now. Why why press more? And it, it kind of goes into fitness. So what happens with a lot of us, let's say even exercising stuff, people will hit a certain goal. And because they don't want to choose to maintain or even go for another goal, whatever it could be, they end up going back, right? So that's where that yo-yoing weight comes from. They don't know really how to keep things going for life long, right? They don't know how to keep those, uh, keep it as a lifestyle. And I think that's a big thing. You know, we get to a certain point because we don't really know how to enjoy it or realize that we, the, the, the journey that we're on. We end up sipping back into this zone of comfortability, and then we start becoming displeased with ourselves. Things start going, you know, haywire. Let's say the business doesn't work as good, the sales aren't going through. You know, my body's not looking like it should, and you're under, wondering why. And you're just, you know, more than likely you're just in a place of comfortability. Jay, thank you for sharing with us that great question. All of your great insights to our time together. I know you have your Amazon bestseller. Word on the block is that you're offering it as a gift. So. I wonder oh, yeah. if you could share with us uh, where we can learn more about that. Well, I mean, I want to help your people out with breaking through to the success, right? So I want to give your guys, you know, and all your listeners the opportunity to get this Amazon bestseller. What you need to do is just go to the website, Kali Coaching, K-A-L-I Coaching.com forward slash secret gift. All one word. So if you go to Kali Coaching.com forward slash secret gift, boom, it's yours. You can download it right now or get it shipped to you for 100% for free. Jay, thank you so much for uh, <laughs> sharing with us that free gift, which will be in the show notes and for really coming on and sharing so many great insights with us. It was such a pleasure to have you on Breakthrough Success. Awesome, Mark. Uh, it is a pleasure. Thank you for having me. I hope, I hope your listeners got a lot out of it. Want to dominate the podcasting industry? Now you can with your free copy of my book, Podcast Domination. You'll learn how to launch, grow, and monetize your very own show. And whether you are a beginner or an expert, this book has a lot of golden nuggets for you. We'll cover the cost of producing this book. All we ask is that you cover the shipping. To get your copy, head over to markgaberti.com slash pd.